Hello and welcome to this section of the Physics 3 Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to continue talking about circular motion of charged particles that are uh, moving through a magnetic field and we're going to work a few problems to kind of give you some practice with that. So in the last section we covered the theory behind it and also listed the relevant equations. We kind of derived some of them and showed you how to calculate the uh, velocity uh, there, the uh, radius, how, what's the radius of the circular motion, what's the period, what's the frequency, and we talked about the theory here. So let's apply that to our first problem. The problem says, uh, what uniform magnetic field needs to be applied perpendicular to the beam of electrons that move at 1.3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second in order to bend the beam to a circular radius of 0.35 meters? All right, so the, the trick here is really just to understand what's going on because you'll see in a second the math is not a big deal. We have a magnetic field. We say it's uniform. That means it's constant, pointed in the same direction, and uniform in, in, ter in terms of its uh, magnitude. We have a beam of electrons. We're shooting that beam perpendicular to the field. All right, that's useful to know. Uh, we know the velocity, 1.3 times 10 to the sixth, and the, the beam is said to go in a circular orbit, obviously because it's shooted inside, sh shot inside of a magnetic field. It's going to curve. And we know the radius. So anytime you're given the radius of a circular motion of a charged particle beam, there's a good bet that you're going to need to use the equation that we derived in the last section. The radius of any particle traveling in a magnetic field uh, in terms of its orbital uh, motion there that we had talked about in the last section is going to be the mass of that particle times the velocity of that particle divided by the charge on that particle times the magnetic field strength. Now I said this in the last section, but I want to be absolutely clear. Everything in this formula, because of the way we derived it when we drew the pictures and showed how the beam was coming in, everything in here is really uh, an absolute value. In other words, just because it's an electron doesn't mean we put a negative sign here. If we put a negative Q, we're going to get a negative radius. That doesn't make sense. So you're only dealing with the uh, absolute value of the charge uh, because you only care about you know, the radius. You're not even, you don't even care which way the thing is orbiting. Charged particles that are positive are going to orbit a different direction than the guys that are negative, but the magnitude of this charge is the only thing that's going to tell you the size of that orbit. The radius is what we're trying to talk about. Magnetic field strength is an, is an absolute value as well, so we don't really care about which way it's pointed because, again, the direction that the field is pointed is going to change the direction that the particles are orbiting. We don't care about that. We only care about the radius, so we're not talking about the direction of motion. Mass makes sense. That's just the mass. Velocity, it's important in all of these calculations when you use these little formulas for circular motion in a magnetic field. The velocity that they're talking about is really always the velocity component of your particle that's perpendicular to your field. So if you had a field coming out of the board, for instance, then you would be, the velocity you'd put in here would be the velocity of, of the beam that's coming in perpendicular to this field if I shot a beam up and then it would orbit something like this around the magnetic field lines coming out of the board. So in this problem it's pretty easy because it says uniform magnetic field needs to be applied perpendicular to a beam of electrons. All right, So we know we have a beam of electrons, we know we have a field perpendicular to it, so the velocity uh, that we have here, 1.3 times 10 to the 6, is the velocity that we put in here. If you're shooting a beam obliquely in at some angle to the field, then you need to figure out what component of the velocity is perpendicular to the field because that's the, that's the component that we cared about. And we talked about that in the last section when we drew all the pictures. All right, so let's see if we can figure this out. Okay, we said we, we 